Hello, Jim Dramatic here. Welcome to another Road Wars mini I don't know why I'm calling them mini at this point, because they're getting longer and longer. Um, but uh, yes, this is for the fourth heat of Series 10. And after a lackluster previous heat, this heat was probably one of the best ones so far, because we had a winner that we didn't expect to see, but if you've seen the heat, you know exactly who won it, but if not, we'll just see it in two seconds. Anyway. Why got... the hell are you watching this? Exactly, yeah, why, why are you watching a heat full of spoilers? But uh, joining me, uh, uh, I, have, I have actually three guests with me now, I seem to be wanting to increase my guests more and more nowadays. Uh, first guest is uh, Tenty Jester, Owain. I just want to say this now, Cool Cat is one of my favourite movies. He loves everyone. <laughs> Of course. I love all kids. And, and now this video is copyright striked. <laughs> God damn it, I win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you heard, our second guest is uh, Alex the Hunted. Uh, apparently I'm back in Jim's basement. Yeah, for, for all eternity until I need you. And you're not escaping. You're, 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 you're not working on any of the robots you have at the moment. You're staying right in your basement. God damn it. <laughs> And uh, not finally, building it to escape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna, not gonna let you out that easily. Uh, and then finally, um, vote Saxon 07. Hello, YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who. Ah, oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it will never leave. You're not you. in this. You're not in this episode, Stephen. What the hell? We got it two weeks for you. Why am I here? Um, because I asked you to come along, and you went, "All right." Stephen, why are you doing a Robot Wars video? I thought you were a Doctor Who YouTuber. I oh, know. Why am I here? I baited him to doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told him. I I told. I lied to him and said if, if he does this episode, he never have to talk about talk about Doctor Who again. But unfortunately, uh, no. Wait, I, I do remember you saying you don't. You never has to do a review of the same Sonic screwdriver again. <laughs> so we just sit here and discuss the uh, the new Doctor's new clothes. And, oh, look at that! She's wearing a jumper. Uh, right, Ooh, no, she's got, way. She's got suspenders way. on. How much are you going to use those? Like pulling them, like when she talks. I don't know. I mean, I may be, I may be just a uh, small-time doctor here, pulling little with the thumbs, pulling little braces. But uh, yeah, this heat. Oh my god, this heat was great. <laughs> like, it was fantastic. This was. An, I, I an... thought it was good, and the only problem I really have was the semi-final fights were a bit. Sh well, they were really short. They but were short. They were short, but there were some great robots on the table, also some uh, robots that certainly surprised, and no other robot surprised me more, personally, pretty much, I think, pretty much, oh, ever since, the only, the first, first big surprise since uh, Bayamoth actually managed to win a heat, another big surprise is someone winning a heat now, but even more surprising than someone Bayamoth, it was of course Nuts 2. Now, lay on as many nut puns as you can, because believe me, I'm, I've heard them all, <laughs> so far. Dave, if you were to fall right now, I would cash you. Oh, that's the worst one. You started with the worst one. <laughs> you could you could say that you could say that I you could say that um I know the I know team are real old chestnut. Oh, and nut, nuts did nut the entire nut all the competition fans because oh my they got nutted badly. I will uh, say the melty brain the melty brain one four thousand had a bit of a bit of an old nut all over the arena floor as well. At one yeah, point. they made Andrew and piss themselves. Sure nothing. <laughs> when you nut, but she keeps suck. <laughs> I mean, nuts. it's nothing but pleasure. I mean, this is what we could have seen from Nuts Two, maybe, or in some ways in the last series, if it wasn't the fact that their wheel, some wire got rolled over something, and the one the wheels wouldn't work, so they kind of got stuck on one side instantly. What I will say is, I'm not sure that the Melty Brain was really working that well this ep in this episode. It never really moved that much. I, I I noticed it was moving, but very slowly. Yeah, it wasn't. The movement wasn't as obvious in this one, but the the damage actually, it it managed to, it managed to uh, disable two, you know his opponents with one hit, like it managed to KO concussion twice. Yes, and one time concussion in the first fight wasn't KO because the wheels were still moving, but because it was stuck to Andron four thousand. Plus, also it was on one side not working because the thing the hit bent the wheel in or something. So it it managed to yeah beat concussion twice and also made Andrew piss itself, which was <laughs> that was a precision hit for a bunch of chain files. Yeah, and actually, the, actually in that particular battle, I think the uh, mini bots were actually helping out because they kind of delayed Andrew and getting towards them so they could spin up faster. And the, I mean, the mini bots got hit a few times by n nuts, which is a bit, bit, bit kind of like you know, but you know, uh, they're, they're they're trying to work for them and they're getting punished. <laughs> but the nuts, you know, nuts too. Was one of those robots that 
I see. I've seen the spin-up tests for it. You know, after series nine, I was like, if this robot had just been working in that fight. It would've been so great to see. And I guess I was proven right because hell, they won a heat. <laughs> Christ, you thought Beamoff winning a heat was unlikely. Yeah, this is the most unlikely one I've ever seen so this far. This is like Deertor winning a heat. Yeah, I mean, Deertor w- winning a heat would have been something. It would have been disequivalent, honestly, of saying, you know, it's Nuts 2 winning. And fair play to the boys and Nuts, you know, they went from like being a comedic team that sort of got through the first round because Beamoff, no, but well, t- t- uh, Razor kind of uh, screwed up and pit itself along with the uh, Cr- Killy Cranky, too. How could this happen to me? <laughs> R.I.P. Razor fanboys. <laughs> But going from that to being launched out the arena by Matilda to winning in a heat with a completely flawless record in a heat. Mm. I, Not even that damaged either. I don't think anyone really hit them. No, Concussion hit them a little bit, but it wasn't really damaged. It was just sort of a tap. I mean, Concussion fell on top of them as opposed to anything else. And Android didn't get a hold of them properly. It, Yeah, it legitimately managed to... Oh, Owen's back there. <laughs> Actually, I just, you just disappeared for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> My Skype just That's... froze and then disconnected me from the call. That the epicness of nuts caused you to go away <laughs> and, and, eval- and evaluate your life for a second, then you came back swinging. Seeing nuts, seeing nuts spin up is like the ending of a Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> yeah, don't look at it. <laughs> it's spinning too fast. Ah, and then you mate, and then your skin melts off. Beautiful. But, yeah, so, explodes. So, so that's that's why my skin is in a puddle on the floor. Then that is exactly the Actually, reason why. I just I just realised con- uh, Nuts Two only fought two robots in this episode. Yeah, because it yeah. fought Concussion twice. <laughs> it fought Andron Four Thousand twice. Yeah, it, yeah, wow. It never got a chance to go against Iron Ore. Uh, or, um, or actually, if actually, if it got against the kegs, that would have been quite funny as well. I don't know. Just for the, the thrill of it, two joke robots going against each other. But Nuts 2, wow, they are a grand finalist. Congratulations, Nuts. Gra- congratulations, it's zero, Nuts. It's, got, it's, got, it, it's gone from zero, it's gone from zero wins to having more wins than Sabretooth. Yeah, and... Yeah, Gabe's not going to be happy about that. <laughs> still got still got more wins than the Terra Turtle team, <laughs> which is uh, a bit hilarious. But uh, of course, the runner-up in the heat was uh, Concussion. Um, they vastly improved, vastly improved. But and and for, I mean, they got to show off their spinning power at least, but never really completely annihilated anything. Unfortunately, apart from the certain um, keg that went. F- <laughs> Completely loose off its shell, but you did a fair bit of damage to uh, Iron Ore Four, uh, six even. I did some damage to the side, yeah. Uh, concussion really was very unfortunate that both times they actually their improvements was actually what killed them. You know, their uh, their nut busters, <laughs> as they so cleverly called them, which is a great name for a defensive device against nuts. But concussion, I was very, I was just by, I, mean, I like concussion, and in this series particularly, they have improved the. Um, Pretty much, they pretty much improved the electronics. Last year, their biggest problem was, or last series, their biggest problem was obviously uh, burning out a lot. They pretty much did a King Buxton every heat. They, they, it was their electronic system, I believe, is it was just far too complicated, and they went for a much more simpler mm-hmm. setup this series. Yeah, and this simpler setup definitely helped them a lot out because it didn't really burn out once this entire heat. It was really consistent. It just <laughs> the wheels ended up ultimately being the problem, combined with their nutbuster. Were their downfalls in because because they they were having problems driving at all when they were upside down with those uh, bits of plastic stuck on the side of them, which it's not very often that someone actually managed to make a device that is nuts proof but also managed to make them kill themselves, and that that's a first as far as I'm aware. <laughs> I don't know, but concussion was they came back again. And obviously, they've got still got a chance. They're in the ten robot rumble. Um. I'm not sure what they're... They are going to do really well in that rumble. They might. I, I think their biggest opponent, I think, will be Eruption, personally. Well, actually, I think their biggest opponent would probably be another spinner, which is... Big Nipper. Actually, really, yeah. yeah it's Big Nipper, and say so if, if, if it works. No, I think Traction's going to beat him. Tra- Traction can easily beat Concussion. Come on. I'm feeling so sorry for it. For traction, it's literally in there to die. The funniest part of the scene when I was watching it with a mate before, and the funniest thing was like, you know, you see like all the robots, they've given that lineup of who's in the battle so far, and it's like, you know, Apollo, Sabretooth, yeah, Terahertz, and then I actually, I actually know traction. how it's going to end. It's going to be traction sin in the middle of the arena and everyone exploding around them. 
that's the tactic. I mean, they didn't realize that's actually their, that's their, their tactic to win. Everyone knows that. It's clearly. just it's just gonna be like the ending of Kingsman. Yeah, <laughs> everyone exploding around them, and then just like, all right, that's. That... Stephen, what do you think about this concussion? Because you haven't said it, I haven't been able to say anything. <laughs> I know, like the it's it's like some sort of hurricane or typhoon of just all these Robot Wars fans going, Rah! and I'm sitting here listening to it with popcorn. You're being polite. I know, I'm too polite, that's what's wrong with me. I need to be, no, shut up, this is my opinion. <laughs> uh, yeah, with concussion, the second that I heard they'd put extra wheel guards and stuff on it, I went, oh, no, because if it's not designed to be part of your robot, it's going to be naturally weaker, be it like a bolt coming loose or because of the whatever type of material you've made them out of snapping or jamming up against the wheel. In fact, I was watching the fight with Elizabeth and I turned her and said, they haven't. They haven't added extra wheel protection, have they? Because first thing that's going to happen is it's going to get hit by one of the wheels and stick and jam up the side of the robot, and that's exactly what happened. Although I did appreciate them gyro dancing the hell out of that robot, trying to get it back onto its wheels again. But I yeah, that was that really unexpected. Much. I didn't. I didn't think it could do that. It's that. It, I guess they've improved it that much that so it can actually I gyro dance now. Bars heavier now. The the spin and drum on concussions a lot heavier now. So when they do get it up to that speed, and also because of how wide the wheelbase is, I was not expecting them to be able to gyro dance to that amount. You know, I mean, how much power is in there? I think it's down to the power because I remember um, I think one of the team members put on the show the new bar off from the unofficial robots and I asked how much it was. It's only about two two kilograms heavier. So I don't think it was the extra weight might have done that, but I think it's more a case of the power and. Maybe they just maybe because they put it to full power, so they thought maybe the gyro dance. If this, when they saw the gyro dancing happen, they thought we can use this to our advantage and try and self-right with the spikes. But nothing really. It didn't really work out for them, unfortunately. And again, their own wheel protection killed them, which is not really protecting them very well. No, but... it's unfortunately the design of concussion because the side panels are sloped, so the bottom is wider and thicker than the top is. So you could see them getting to a point where they were kind of almost getting back onto the wheels again. But because of the shape of the side of the machine, it was just falling back onto its top again. Yeah, because essentially it's more of a trapezium shape when it comes down to it, and yeah, it tends to be... What I will say is also I love I love the uh, aesthetic additions they've made to um, to concussion with the uh, reflective like I don't know like it's, it sort of reminds me of the reflective stuff that was on rhubarb. Yeah, actually, one thing the LED, I, I like the extra LEDs put on this time. Yeah, change them from last time because I think it showed on the Twitter where they had like they like changed color as they went across like some kind of like undersea creature, and they never got to see that as much on TV, which was a shame because I quite like the aesthetic of the uh, of random LED lights. As you know, Coyote also uh, did that, which <laughs> didn't really last very long against spinners, but you know they it, it's nice to show off a bit of. But yeah, concussion was st- still in the Tamway melee. It still got a chance, but it was. Outclassed by nuts and its own defences. Take for that what you will. <laughs> uh, then we have a robot that I'm very surprised even made it into the ten-way melee because its weapon actually didn't work once. Um, Iron Ore Six. Wedge. Inventor of the flipper. Yeah, I mean, is this, is this the first time we've seen it in the modern series? Anyway, a robot that has a flipper and it hasn't actually fired once. Because yes. dude, I was so wound up by Iron Ore Six. I mean, because really like, like, we all know how powerful that flipper is as well. Yeah, who's my yeah, pick to win this episode? Well, actually, my, my... we've all seen the events. Like, I, in my review itself, like I compared Arno to Apollo because Apollo started off as Chronic the Wedgehog in the Fourth Wars, which wasn't really a very good machine. But that, look what it's accomplished now. The exact same thing with Arno. Competed in the Fourth Wars, it was a terrible machine, mm. and then we see it in the live events. Absolutely fantastic flipper. And Still owns the record for the quickest shooter. Yeah, and yeah, it absolutely wound me up. Like when the the first heat, uh, so the first battle of the heat, I was saying Arnold's going to win this. It's so simple. Toron, it's a good spinner, but it's got a lot of ground clearance. Arnold six can get underneath that easily. Car to the sidewall and out. The kegs, they're basically two middleweights going in against the heavyweights. Arnold's going to do pretty much another Apollo with them, with uh, Rubber Duck, and just fire them out over the top panels uh, of the side wall. But the robot that I wanted to win that fight won, but not in the way that I wanted it to win. It wasn't impressive. No, I mean... It won by sheer dumb luck. It won because it went because Andrew went into Matilda at one point. That was the only... Because it it, it won because it died... Just before, just after the other one, uh, the the robot that was actually re- was doing really well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hate I hate to bring it up, Stephen, but even push to exit flipped more than 
iron ore. <laughs> Don't get me started. Oh, <laughs> but, I mean, sorry. That's, that's, that's the thing. It's like, we all know how good iron ore is. Iron ore 6 is in the live events. I mean, it's won so much. And yet and it's, it's just, pretty much coasted its way through the heat. The only time... The only official time we've seen it flipped, flip in this series is that uh, it, is that interview video that was posted on Facebook the other day. Yeah, the ones, yeah, the, yeah that, that was, I remember seeing it and thinking, oh, so that was, that's a really good looking flipper. It's massive. I've heard about them in the live shows. They seem great. And then to not see it flip and just essentially become a giant doorstop is really disappointing. And also its entanglement devices didn't really do anything either. On the, I mean, they, they, I mean, they kind of deployed how they were supposed to. But they never really got a hold of anything. And actually, their anti, actually their devices, all the debris went everywhere. Actually, caused them, both them and Torn to get kind of stuck on the arena floor at multiple points. Yeah. They just and, according, to... Dara, and, and according to Dara, this is like these are like the first ever flipper. I mean, I mean, it's not like they they became a flipper in series five. I mean, it's not like series two and three really was the birth of the flipper. But you know, of course, it's but, not you like know, chaos. Or Cassius existed, or anything. Yeah. What's that robot? I have never heard of that. No, it's all about iron ore and their axe. Yeah, and it's just after all that hype and all that build up and all the expectation, iron ore. And I didn't, unless I say, if this, if they keep up this track record, they're not going to win the ten way melee. I'm sorry, <laughs> they eruption or Apollo. Hell, if, they keep, if they keep up this, they probably won't even qualify for series eleven. No, I mean, if they put no performance in the in the at least if they, if they at least get their weapon working for the ten way melee, they might have some chance something to show off what they can do. But if they keep up this record, eruption and Apollo are just going to flip them over, and even like traction. We all, said, <laughs> we all said in in like our previews of series of the, of this series, like yeah, I know in the original series wasn't very never really did that well, but in the live events it's become amazing, and it's come back to Robo Wars, and it's done shit again. I mean, I mean, if you had no knowledge of the live shows, you just think, oh, it's back again. Same, you know. Yeah. Great. What happened to Ainor's three through five? Uh, live shows, weren't they? I think. Actually, no. Yeah, I, no, I was just going by someone. I was just trying to be someone who's never heard of the live circuit. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like... why the hell? Did, why the hell did he bring? Or, you know, I mean, he brought Ainor five along as well. Why the hell did he just put that one in? It would might have worked better. I mean, I've heard from somebody that the um, the flipper is has been considered quite temper, temperamental in the live shows of, of recently, and it's showing. <laughs> so, uh, so it might be a case of this robot's getting old. It might be a case of all getting old, or maybe it's just a case of it's just not the most reliable flipper in the world uh, in its current state. I'm not sure, but it really didn't underperformed in its heat, which is a bit of a shame. It might just be a case of rotten luck. We don't know yet. It could be a case of rotten luck. I don't know. Maybe it could have been. Many factors, really, but regardless, we never really got to see um, Iron Six really perform to any potential it could have had previously on but live shows. We've been bashing on it for a while. It's still, it was really well driven. Oh, it's well driven. It's a great. I still think it's a good robot. It's just the the big disappointment just comes from the fact we never really got to see its weapon do anything, which is what, what no, the whole point I, of the robot feel, is. But I feel really bad now because when we did our um, series ten preview, I told Mike that he better watch out because Iron Ore's going to wreck the heat. Oh, Mike's really going to be uh, proven proven right by that statement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He's going to be looking at me as if to say, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Which, <laughs> to be fair, is true. <laughs> a little bit. But, so yeah, Androne 4000. In my opinion, it really, I was really impressed by it. Personally. Yeah, it delivered, man. Like, I wasn't expecting... Because I, I heard that it was a crusher. I wasn't expecting it to actually be able to pierce machines. I thought with most crushers these days, they just sort of seem to grapple on to robots. They don't actually, you know, puncture or penetrate any sort of armor. Um, I think they got a lucky hit with Concussion because Concussion were upside down, so maybe the floor panel of Concussion's a lot weaker. Yeah, it probably is, but also, when I first saw Android 4000, I thought it was a good robot, it looked really great, but I just didn't think it would have the survivability, I thought, being a new machine, but it really, really impressed me. I was really, I, it actually, it was really well driven as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. it had the, it had the match of the night with Toron, definitely. Yeah, that was a oh, really yeah, great match. That was a very contentious <laughs> match, alright. Oh, definitely. There might be like potential it's fight courts. out that they're five from the job. Yeah. Because <laughs> Rem... Because <laughs> remember the boss said you were win, 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 what was all your fight? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, in fairness, though, if these guys come back again, I—I I mean, I encourage them to come back again. I really want to see them. You know, Android eight thousand. 
Yeah, and around 8,000, and they'll, st they'll start to get into the millions, eventually, where Android makes so many more versions, but they could have f Android 4000.5, because why not? But yeah, Android... Or Android point one, one, yeah, take a leaf out of uh, Arnold's book. Yeah, yeah, yeah do it 2.1, or something like that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, was, I really loved Android 4000. I mean, again, it was one of the robots I thought was good, but I didn't think... I thought maybe it might not do very well, because it got some good competition. It had some good competition, but it... You know, it was able to penetrate armor, it was able to survive a, an entire three minutes against um, Tauron, and it was really well driven, which again, for first time robots, one of the biggest problems is driving and having the time, get the time to be good at driving and stuff, but uh, yeah, I think it was, I think for what it was worth, it was it was just very unlucky in its battle against Ionor, really. I think Especially it, yeah. for a two-wheel drive bot as well. Yeah, if it was... two-wheel two drive bots are usually w much harder to drive, because mm. they, they turn too much. Yeah, and if it wasn't for them losing part of their wheel against Iron Ore 6, I think they probably could have... If they survived the decision, potentially, I think they probably could have had a good, a good chance of winning it, because they were doing well. But they didn't lose their, It's not just they lost the wheel, they also just they couldn't self-ride. That's true as well, yeah. But, uh, imagine, I think... No, 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 they can self-ride, but I think last time it was because it was because the hydraulic fluid was out, was, was out of the robot. Yeah. But, but, but the... But the, cold, but the yeah, but you did see it was working. Like the 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 claw was working in that fight. So I don't know. Maybe it just didn't have the, enough power in it or something. Yeah, maybe something internally went wrong or something. But um, it was just a, it was it was disappointing in a way. But at the same time, it definitely proved it. It proved itself a lot. Oh wait, more no, than... I remember why. It's because they lost the self rising bar in the nut fight with nuts. Oh yeah, it fell off, didn't it? That fell off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, compared to something like Iron Ore Six again, which is kind of we've talked about before, obviously, um, it kind of went in with kind of. Some expectations are not many for being a new robot, and ended up being more my favorite to the whole of the whole heat. Personally, I really enjoyed watching it, and it was it managed to survive so many hits against Tor, and that was impressive to me. Just yeah, it didn't like, like it, had, it, it really went hammer and tongs for it as well. It just went straight for that spinning bar. Yeah, I, res I respect them for going against all their opponents straight in. Like in, in that first opening moment, they went straight for concussion. You know, no, 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 yeah. no, no fear. They went straight into me. I think that's the one that some 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 robots going against some robots. That's sometimes the best strategy, just going out all out sometimes. And they... I also do love how that the um, the crusher arm is operated by a light switch. Yeah, <laughs> there's something fun. Uh, I love there's the kind of DIY element about it as well. Um, but yeah, it was one of those. I remember like seeing a little tiny picture of it in the pits that Alex sent me one time. And I was like, I can sort of see the crush. I thought, and then I saw the official picture, and I thought, yeah, it might do all right. But like, yeah. my biggest worry was that it doesn't. It didn't have a base plate underneath the crusher, underneath like where the crusher was, so it would, you know. Yeah, that, you that's to... what really turned me off the robot before this heat. But now seeing it, it didn't really affect it that much, did it? No, huh. not really. I mean, it was actually able to mitigate quite a bit, but. Yeah, I was very impressed with Android 4000, and I hope to see him again in, in the possible Series 11. One thing the about... Razor, dare I say those words? Yeah, you can. <laughs> one, um, one thing about... Uh, well, it's connected to Andron, but one thing I really liked as well was Angela helping to fix Andron as well. Yeah, that was really fun to watch because I like I like the fact that yeah the president is actually really getting in and stuff and helping them out and there's there's a lot of, I like there's a lot of different teams helping out. I saw Craig Danby there. I saw the Bucky guy. Also, I saw Craig Craig wearing a Bucky shirt, which is pretty funny. Um, actually, if you didn't know, if you also noticed that um, Andrew had a Bucky sticker on it as well. And it yeah, also, and also that. doesn't it have a um, Team Toad sticker as well? Just, yeah. Just, just it also like, actually if you saw in its fight with no actually if no it saw in its fight with Iron Ore. Yeah, it actually had the top back. It had Toron on the back. Yeah, <laughs> got a little Toron sticker. I mean, obviously, Traction last year also had a, t a Team Toad sticker as well. I mean, they seem to pass things I don't around. Think it was, I don't think it was Toron. I don't think it was the sticker because it was. It felt it was the entire back plate. So I don't know. Maybe Toron didn't gave them a gave them their armor or something. Uh, as, a, as a little going away present. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But it was it's definitely. Been, it's been lucky that if it was an armor plate, it fit perfectly on the back of the robot. Yeah. 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 Speaking of Toron, obviously, I felt so sorry for Toron. <laughs> I really did because I was looking forward to seeing Toron, and it definitely lasted longer than last series, which I'm thankful. It did of. so well, but it didn't win. No, it was. Very, I think it was most unlucky in its first fight because in the second fight it had a good, good brawl, which we'll get to obviously the some the slightly contentiousness of it in some ways. But the first fight was, it was kind of unfortunate because they just didn't move when they could have, or some. I I don't know exactly what happened. Did they didn't they didn't move when they could have, or Iron or did move and they were counted out, or. 
it was kind of confusing. I thought, were, I thought they were beached on something because you could see the yeah, wheels. Yeah, actually, that's what they, that was. So that's what happened is they were be- they were beached on they were beached on. I think it was some of Iron Ore's um, yeah, entanglement. Cause, yeah, cause that stuff got, that stuff stuff got everywhere, and like, even I I know was stuck on it a little bit, but managed to get off it. To, it, it, it was it was I, and because they said they could move around after it, and actually you can see in some of the slow mo's when they stopped, the wheels were turning, and it wasn't working it was, afterwards. It was yeah, it was. I think it was a case of it was just beached on something and couldn't move. Does that really count as an immobilization, though? Or is that just a case of just... Sling- Te- technically, yes. If you can't move in your own circumference, then yes. Hmm. Well, I mean, you if you say the same with two machines that are stuck together are deemed as immobile, then I think, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a... Carbide was, a- car bike was uh, counted out a couple of episodes ago because it was stuck on its own wheel. That's true, yeah. It was a very... It was a, it's a shame, actually, to go out in that way, but then, obviously, they had the redemption, and then... With a very very good fight, they ends up losing as well, mainly because of I'm guessing less control was probably one of the biggest problems with that's them. That's definitely going to be a fight court episode. That's definitely a fight court future episode. It has to be because it was one. This one, this was a very good fight, but also relatively I, I do, controversial. I do stand by Andron winning that match because it showed more aggression and it showed more control. I agree. I do yeah. think. I do think it was. I mean, the only thing that Toron got on them was damage, and that was it. Everything else was aggression and aggression and um, I think while aggression was definitely relatively similar, I think it was the control that me to me gave it, and maybe then the, the, only, the only really the only really contentious thing really was the fact that Andron was lost, you know, wasn't fully mobile at the end of the fight. Yeah, but that was like right at the very end, though. I guess so. I guess if Bu- I guess if Bucky can go to a decision when it's stuck in its side for the last ten seconds, and I guess so so can Andron, I guess. But it was it was it was. It's such a shame to see. It looks so. I love the design of Tor, and it's so sleek compared to the original. Because the original one was good looking, but it did look bulky. A bit as hell. Yeah, very boxy and very bulky. This one though looked so much sleeker. It was. I love the black color scheme, like the angry face on it. It had a lot more personality and. The bar. I would say like the first, the, the first tour on looked like it fit in with like in series five of like accident or something like that. Yeah, although the, the first one lasted as long as accident. That's true. Yeah, about five seconds last one. Nice to see it actually last longer this time, but at the same time, it was a shame to see it go out this this kind of quickly. It, it ended on a good fight at least. It didn't end up being like one like you know little movable link out or something like some other robots can happen. Um, like the last like the last appearance, um, and then of course finally the robot that will get you drunk. The kegs. <laughs> I yeah I I I I loved I loved the kegs as well. I mean, they're they're also from team they're from Team Terra Turtle who have had so much success with Terra Turtle in the past. They thought we'll make another robot this time and make it out of two halves of a beer barrel and stick some bar spinners on it. Um, they didn't really perform too much in this heat, but again, I love the kind of personality the robots have of. Just and also the I I I really I don't know if anyone caught it. But I love the little slogan they have on the back of their shirts: Two halves, please." <laughs> I love that. That was a great. That was a great little joke. I love that. It's it's it did better than everyone thought it was going to do. I mean, it got the shit kicked out of it, but it lasted a bit long. Everyone just thought it was going to explode in the. You know, it's got a wooden base plate and mm. made out of a beer keg and the spinner Nearly killed Andrew and Dodge. Yeah, and to its credit, the uh, actual beer kegs didn't really get destroyed. They just one just fell off. Technically, I mean, when when you put it back on the after the end of the match, you see it was still intact. It just it just came off the base plate, and then all hell broke loose from there, really. But seeing seeing Toron make this thing go into a barrel roll was pretty funny. I'm so annoyed that they cut so much out of Robot Wars. I understand why they do it for timing purposes and things like that. But in that second fight against Concussion after Cease was called, you saw Matilda throw one half of the uh, the kegs up into the air. What they didn't show you was her throwing them completely out of the arena. Oh, that would have been hilarious. Threw them out, Both threw them. one half of kegs out of the arena, and it smashed into the outer, you know, uh, protective wall of the arena. Yeah. And I know that for a fact, because had they shown that on TV, you would have seen Shane, Anthony and me waiting to go in for our next fight, and just like turning around like a bomb had just gone off because she <laughs> threw that into the sidewall with some serious force. You're under attack from beer kegs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Even well, even, actually, even, uh, even even Matilda's like gal the arena. <laughs> and speaking of the editing, I've got to say the editing on this episode was pretty shit honestly in places. Like like I'll give you a few examples as people as people who edit videos we kind of notice these things more than most people but there was moments like where you could hear sound effects in the background when they were doing it that was clear like when they were doing the um when Jonathan was talking about um I know six 
and it yeah, awkwardly spend this. Come up. Yeah, you, it spend this. It spend this awkwardly long time on this one shot of them working on, on the Ino, which I think originally was supposed to be what ha- followed after the battle board, but they didn't. They didn't check over or watch over it and realize. Oh wait, the battle board isn't there. So we've got this like twenty second scene of just watching them fiddle on the desk. What yeah. The- I mean, the filler wasn't as bad as last heat, obviously, because we actually have all the fights of the heat. But yeah, there were some editing problems, and uh, I, mean, I wanted to see the kegs go flying out of the ring. I'm kind of disappointed we get to see that now. That sounded really funny. <laughs> like, like also, like you had the moment with um, uh, I think it was the they talked about the Andron 4000s team captain, and you just this frame rate just dropped like a brick. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I noticed that as well. Yeah, actually, I kind of noticed that. I think about it. Oh yeah. Man, yeah, the editing was kind of shit in this episode. It's one of, I, I'm not the best at edit, noticing editing in space and mistakes, and it's blatantly, obviously crap. It, it also like came off as like some. I think it was the uh, fight with um, with the yeah the fight at the end of um, yeah the con- the the concussion. No, sorry, not the concussion. The um, uh, uh, the Toron and uh, Ainor fight, where it just felt like at the end, like Jonathan was just being re- was being cut off mid sentence at points. Like some of the editing was really choppy at points. Yeah, I don't know why it seems to be most notable in this episode. For did they just reason. have the intern? Did they have the intern do this part, this episode, or something? Like I think, that? I think, I think, Jonathan, I think Jonathan Pierce edited it. It's probably got Dara to do it because you know Andrew's helping out with Andrew, and they got Dara to do some editing. <laughs> and then being rubbish. I don't, I don't know. Sometimes we, we, we went back to the old era for a little bit. The extreme levels of editing. Yeah. God, they, they were doing crap at editing in that series. But, the um, but yeah, back to the cake, like, uh, like. <laughs> All, I was, all I'll say, say is, I hope they do come back. Oh yeah, they make a flat bot out of a keg. No, we, we we need to see we need to see John Frizzell come back and his and his team because I I love that team. I don't know why I've always been, always been even if they don't really never really accomplish anything in any Robot Wars. They always they just always make a fun team to have. So I don't know. I mean, technically, with this team is now probably the worst performing team ever on Robot Wars. Yeah, they are. They've never won a fight. They've out, they're out worst Velociraptor. How do you even do that? <laughs> I mean, at least they have Ironside 3, but, you know. <laughs> and the mouse, technically, Ma- Ma- the mouse has won something, but. My mouse. But yeah, yeah. they've got a terrible track. Like, no matter what robot they bring in, it seems to. <laughs> Fail. And they've got they've still and they've got Terra Turtle in the international special. Oh great, that'll be fun. <laughs> more more turtles, that's what we need. Just make a turtle beer I mean Terra Turtle always, always looks like it's made out of a beer keg. Like a giant one, so just just go all out and make it a turtle beer keg. Just to combine the two together. But um yeah, the actual heat itself, I mean we've talked a little bit about we've actually talked a little bit about the first one with Iron Ore Six, Toron and the kegs. Where the kegs did kind of just Played a sort of side role in the heat where they got kind of hit a bit, and then obviously Torin did make him go one of them go flying like a in a barrel roll, <laughs> which was pretty fun. But all that debris from Iron Ore basically was what caused the fight, Iron Ore to win the fight because both got caught on the debris, but Iron Ore was able to get loose first, and Torin didn't. So it was almost going to a we're decision. Now, we are now four for four on the arena getting damaged in episodes. Actually, this wasn't a case of the arena being damaged; it was more a case of Iron Ore spreading all, all its um. All this no, debris when, um, when Toron when Tor hit um, Keg's um, blade off, that went flying into some lighting, I think, and like close to. Oh, you saw something. That. Oh, you saw something fall off, didn't they? It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't as extreme as uh, Apex and last team, but it was still quite. <laughs> well, they have to do a lot of ducking in the sea, aren't they? Having to like duck out really, really stuff. Like Andrea. Oh, Angela. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the but arena's then... broken. The arena had to broke again. Like I, I think I'm right in saying, like every episode of this series, the arena is probably going to da- get damaged in some way. They really need to buy this arena. That's pretty much why they're doing the ten way, isn't it? Like just to see how much damage the arena can take and what they need to work on for next year. At least I hope that's why they're doing it. Or maybe they're secretly planning on just on changing the arena up so they thought the ten way was a good way of like destroying it for the last time before they rebuild it properly. Yeah, so, it's a good way to see it go out. Yes, yeah, so it's so, so like and then have the grand final in the test area. Yes, yeah. so, <laughs> so, so like what I did to Matilda in the Southern Annihilator, just break her up so you can rebuild her. God help <laughs> us if they do the final in the test arena, that's all I'm going to say. It'll be tiny. <laughs> It'll be fun, no, but... Not in that, but from a safety perspective... <laughs> that'd be mental. That when Apex yeah. is throwing its bar through the, the inner wall of the arena, oh, imagine true. the damage the likes of Carbide... Uh, well, who else is in the grand final? Bayamot um, off, the uh, like, nuts, and uh, like, 
Rapid. Mm. Rapid, Arbite yeah. versus Rapid in the test arena. Oh, when the, when the final is going to be going to be workbenches with your ha- heads above your hat. With your hands above your heads, it'll be the most expensive destruction ever. <laughs> you'll you'll you'll, you'll just st- no, you just steal a uh, plate. You just steal one of um, Rapid's plates, and you can fund your next robot. Yeah, <laughs> but the actual yeah, the fight itself was kind of it was it was a good balance. But then obviously Ainor survived till longer than Toron. What we mean stuck on stuff. So. Second longer, basically. Yeah, pretty much. It was so close to being you know I being both counted down, make a judge decision. But if that was the case, I think I, Toron would have won if it wasn't for that. Yeah, if it went to like if it went to a judge's decision, like the two lasted to the end of the fight, then it would have gone to Toron because Toron was just dominating this fight. Yeah, but. When it comes down to the rules, technically Toron was immobilized first, so it's true. They had to Iron Ore won. Technically rules oh, are rules. Oh, Iron Ore. The only weaponless robot that can go up against free spinners and win. True. <laughs> God damn Iron Ore. You're worth so much more than this. It is worth a lot more. But um yeah, so Iron Ore six bullshit the way you can't wait through that one. <laughs> And then, yeah, Concussion, Nuts 2, and Andro 4000. Con- Nuts 2 got the f- one hit on Concussion. That disabled half them on one side. And then uh, Concussion and Andro have a nice little hug and get stuck together. <laughs> With Andro yeah, breaking... Yeah, te- technically Concussion wasn't immobilised. They were stuck. It was just stuck to, yeah. to um, Andro, and there was no way of getting them separate. Yeah, because so that... technically was immobilised. Yeah, because Andro 4000 I... broke down on the flip, because when it got flipped, it, was, it must have been a movable link or something. It stopped working. And Christian's like, are you going to let us go? And we're like, we can't move it. And so it's like, uh... And Nuts just spinning around, <laughs> spinning in victory. I think, I think that's actually kind of shitty. Like, shouldn't they have stopped the match, um, separated them, and then started the match back up again? Uh, they can't do that. No. But... No, I mean, the reason for one main reason, self and safety. There's no way that would be allowed to happen, um, and also because it would, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't just be a simple job of separating um, concussion from Andron Four Thousand. Like as you saw, like in the aftermath of the match, like they had to basically take apart con- uh, Andron Four Thousand's claw hmm. to take to get them hmm. separated. So that was a fun, that was a funny sight though, and they were getting dragged out of the arena. And they're just stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> well, that actually happened because there was no way of safely separating yeah. them. <laughs> it was kind of both a pathetic sight, but also slightly funny, but also necessary. But it was it, it did make Nuts' victory a lot more. What kind I would of say funny. is why they didn't bring the house robots in to separate to try and separate them. But I'm not really sure why they didn't do that. But that, that would used to be their role before Refbot came about. But I don't know. I but... tell you what it reminded me of. Uh, who remembers that really like forgettable match in Series Seven with Chronic? Uh, Cobra, Pinsir, and there was another robot. I don't. Uh, oh, anyway, um, I barely remember that one, but yeah, but Pinsir grabbed onto Cobra, and then his hydraulic fluid blew up or something, and it was stuck, and Cobra couldn't move, and they were both coming out at the same time. Yeah, the exact was... same thing happened here. Yeah, I was yeah, it's weird how history repeats itself in Robot Wars. <laughs> um but yeah, nuts to nutted concussion and Android with Android four thousand broke down whilst grabbing onto concussion, so they got carried out and nut- counted out and nuts two became the winner for that one. So nuts is first victory by you know into you know, excluding sort of the, the very, default. The great, yeah. like to quote Homer Simpson, the greatest the greatest um three letter the greatest word in the English language, default. The greatest two-syllable word ever. Default. Default. Oh, yeah. but then there were obviously the redemptions have to happen, and concussion versus the kegs. Concussion was not showing mercy. Why? Well, yeah, I mean, you need to redeem, I guess. One so more. Yeah, actually, as, as I said, to its credit, the kegs. Ten- well, they did break apart. The actual beer barrel stayed intact. It just didn't. It just wasn't part of its body. And well, Jonathan, this is why you don't bring Timber into the arena. Yeah, that base plate did get kind of wrecked up, and the other keg did go a little bit more lightly. But yeah, the, that one just. I, think, I mean, it, actually, it's funny because ironically, the one that survives is one without the weapon. <laughs> don't you? Well, yeah, the, the, I mean, the reason why they put the wedge on um, kegs, the kegs for that redemption, is because they're, that, that, that was the one that got destroyed by Tor, and there was literally no way of, retre- of salvaging it. Yes, they had to really kind of butcher a wedge on top of it instead, but it didn't really save them from being hit and taken a out. A wedge, if you saw, if you saw what was made out of wood. 
Yeah, actually, there was that funny bit where you see um, one of the guys from um, the kegs walking past with the wedge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you put this on our robot now. Uh, didn't really save him though, because yeah, one one keg's got split in half, and the other one just kind of got la- eventually uh, <laughs> launched through the arena wall and just sat there dead. So it was quite an easy battle for concussion, really. But it was, kind of, I guess, they had to necessarily had to be go all out because it is a redemption after all. So they can't really afford to lose this one. There is I, quite a few short fights in this episode. Yeah, the, the, the redemption. This is one of them. Yeah, this is one of the big, you know, one of the short ones. But it kind of expected this short because I couldn't see what the kegs would have done to concussion apart from very lucky something lucky happening. Get it, get it drunk, and then get, and then get it and win through DUI. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good tactic. I, yeah. I, I tell you what, though, uh, during this match, there was. Um, concussion, running into one of the kegs, knocking his shell off, and then doing a quick U-turn and going after the other one. That was one of the best attacks I've ever seen in Robo Wars. <laughs> and the second hit, yeah, on... I will say, is like this: this every episode of Robo Wars so far has had like one big moment, and this was this was it for this ser- episode, I think. You know, like this one real memorable moment, like basically uh, the the kegs being just split in two. Yeah, flung around the arena like concussion turning yeah. into Minotaur for a minute. Yeah, and yeah. splinters going everywhere. Actually, all that the concussion got a little splinter in them as well. Like, ooh, that hurt a little bit. <laughs> but concussion, unfortunately, 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 it's, uh, times have changed since uh, Hypno. They've learned from Hypno Disc versus Nasty Warrior. Yeah, they have. Never forget. <laughs> but yeah, con- yeah, concussion. Try to guess. Not everything never. our heroes do is worth remembering. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, concussion hands down won that one pretty flawlessly. Um, and then, what did you think? What did you think, Stephen? Because um, you were still, you were still, you were, still, you were there at the time when uh, were, you were in the pits. Were you in the pits when this fight was happening? When which fight was happening? Sorry, the kegs versus concussion. Yeah, no, we were at the side of the arena for that fight. Oh yeah, you did say yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was a great fight, but <laughs> Whoops. highly highly one sided. Um, obviously, and then we have. Uh, Toron versus Androne 4000. Hands down, one of the best. The best fight of the yeah, game, the best fight. Yeah, yeah. And I actually, I personally agree with the decision. Personally. Only because I think that Androne was a lot more controlled than Toron was. I mean, Toron Ooh. got the damage. It damaged Tor- definitely Toron, hands down. I, gr- yeah, I mean, Androne uh, Andro was far more aggressive. It was always charging at uh, Toron. Toron was always trying to run away. And also, it got. Yeah, more, like, yeah, and that's one of the worst things Torrent could have done. Really, what they should have done is just... There were a few times where I felt like they could have... When the spinner was up to max, they could have turned around and hit them, but they ran away, and then they ended up running into a house robot, and then the disc would stop, and then they... Oh, we have to, we, the bar would stop, and you're like, you have to reach, you know, re-spin it again, and they get attacked by Andrew, and it grabbed, and then... You know, it, it felt like they were, it was mostly half it was running away, and that's probably what came down to the you know, lack of aggression. And the, last, uh, and the control was bad as well, because they ran into the house rocks quite a few times. Yeah. Andro was kind of, well, Andro went in as well, but they went because they were chasing after him, not because they were try, you know, trying to drive into the house where it was. And it felt... I think, had this been the classic series, I think the judge's decision would have gone the other way, because damage carried the most weight back then. Yeah. And we saw that yeah. where, even though it was Andro on the attack, during that attack, that's when Andro took the damage from Toron. So had this been the classic series, I think the judges would have ruled on that. But I'm so glad now that I think it's, it's isn't that aggression gets aggression. It's from? aggression than damage than control. I'm, I'm yeah. so I prefer that yeah. personally. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was. I think it was a fair decision. And really, actually, even though it took a lot of damage, Andrew didn't really, for the most part, wasn't actually that affected by the damage too much. No, they weren't giving up. They yeah, they, keep... they, they, I mean, I'm, call, I'm calling. I'm calling. I mean, apart from the apart from the end. No, I, I don't. I, I don't know if the frame, the chassis, bent or something, because you could see like both wheels were moving, but they didn't have full track, uh, full grip, like traction on the um, on the arena floor. Yeah, plus also Toron really started smoking at one point. I got hit multiple points in the heat. It was just. I like, think that was the belt more than anything. Yeah, because I was worried the weapon wasn't working, but it did keep going. So it must have been belt, yeah, or something that wasn't the engine or too badly damaging. But in the belt smoke when the weapon belt smoke against when it's you know it's. They, 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 you know, they, uh, it, 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 it rubs against the, uh, web, the, uh, ch- the shaft that it's on and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I agree that Andrew and Four Thousand should have won that. I mean, based off the criteria now, and also, I just felt like damage was the only thing that Torn really has had above Andrew, and that was it. Everything else was pretty much Andrew, in my opinion. But it was a shame to see Torn go. It really was, but at the same time, it was a right decision. But hopefully, you know what also makes this episode. Do you know what also makes this episode a real plus? No fog of war. Yes, Yay! not a single not a fog single of war. Fight. 
we, all, we, we kept getting the pit and Rogue House Ro Actually, do we get a Rogue House Robot? got a lot of use this episode. Oh, he did, yeah. I think we did, Actually, do we even get a Rogue House Robot? I think we just got... It was just pit. Yeah, we did. We got two. Oh, oh we got two, two, yeah. Oh, we got two, yeah. But we, did, we got some pits. We got some had Rogue House Robots. We didn't get a Fungal War, so thank... Fuck did, did you guys notice the pit went up again? Recharge it. Yeah, it's done that before, for some reason, the pit going up. Uh... Yeah, I, uh, I mean, there was a. I do remember during filming, there was a time where they just kept, I don't know, firing it like in between fights. And I don't know if a test or something like that. But yeah, it's just so nice that they don't have. They didn't use it. It wasn't used. <laughs> Indeed. Fuck the fuck of war. It's terrible. It'll always be terrible. I don't care if people say they like it. I I can't stand it. Um, I don't think anyone says they don't like it. I mean, I've heard people. I've heard people some people online saying they like it. I I just don't understand them. I know mm. most of them. The robot. The robot teams don't like it. No, the judges don't even like it. So it can't be a good feature, really. But it's whatever. not coming back. It better not. <laughs> if you do, make it at least optimised in some degree rather than just have it... The only person who really seems to like it is Jonathan Pierce. <laughs> yeah, he likes everything, though. <laughs> I swear. Because just... that's his job. That's what he's paid to do. Yeah, he's just a, he's yeah. just a giddy the commentator. Robot Wars awesome! Ah! It's awesome! <laughs> but yeah... Everything is awesome! The kegs is awesome! The kegs, but the kegs are awesome, is What is is taking more damage! <laughs> also, he said armament a lot in this episode. <laughs> I... A lot, for, particularly in the first, very first fight, he said Armin like three or four times. You was he thinking of that? A long goddamn time ago, someone would have come up to him and went, "Jonathan, here's a dictionary. I want you to look up the word armament because I don't think you realize what it means." He still doesn't. Well, it's going to be that scene from Pulp Fiction where he says, "Say armament, say armament again, one more time, motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's one for Sean Poston. Oh, definitely. <laughs> someone, someone get on that. Um, but yeah, Andrew, yes, Andrew and 4000 won that along with her, and then obviously Concussion winning the other other redemption battle. So there you go, on. We lose the kegs and Toron. Bit of a shame. But um, then we have Concussion versus Iron Ore 6. It didn't really last very long, this. Because Iron Ore 6 still didn't work. No, it was like I... a few hits, and then one flip. From the from the drum and Which that was it. It's such a shame because this could have been a really good fight. Yeah, if the flipper was working, I liked the idea of you know a really big flipper versus a really good <clears throat> drum spinner, and it just yeah nothing happened because I was. But what I will say is if you if you notice from the first hit that concussion had on um on Einor, it bent up the front um lip of Einor's flipper. Yeah, it did. It did some like damage in the front. Yeah, and then also it hit a few side panels, but then not be really too much. Didn't we get damaged that badly? But the flipper was definitely not working again, which made the fight a lot more lackluster than it really should have been. This should have been a good fight on paper. Yeah. I I was proven severely wrong in this match as well because I remember when we did the uh, series ten review. Uh, I was saying, what can concussion really do to Iron Ore because of the slope sides and front? Yeah, there was, there was I was one, proven wrong. There was one key problem with that away, unfortunately. It's the fact you, you presumed that Iron Ore was working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was the problem. That's a problem a lot of fans made. made. Well, Actually, and something that I noticed right at the start of the fight, even though Iron Ore's flipper wasn't working, Concussion were able to bend the front panel of Iron Ore up to 90 degrees. Yeah, it yeah. was It was quite a, it was, it was a great hit uh, on them. But <laughs> John Reed would be proud. It's a good hit. It was a very good hit. Yeah. Actually, there was a lot of good hits. In well, actually, that's, it's, it's, it was sort of Iron Ore's own doing, because as soon as Activate went, it just charged head first at Concussion. Yeah, and then that's ultimately not going to be a good idea when, you, when you're a flipper against a drum spinner. Well, I think, I think what their idea was, they're going to charge straight out before Concussion can get up to speed now, boys. But it was it, unfortunately, Concussion gets up to speed very quickly. <laughs> so, yeah. It was a very simple fight. Well, not the most interesting, but it went... Considering how... Damn, we, I, hope he says that, how I hope he says that on King of Bots. I do as well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Concussion wins that one. And Nuts 2 versus Androne 4000. Uh, the very... F didn't hit. The very first hit, like, cut Androne's throat and it just started bleeding all over the place. And <laughs> It was gruesome when you think about it. It was very gruesome. And then also, then it, then it started pissing itself upwards. And then Matilda's like... And, you know, it, it, it saw Matilda and got really scared. And... Okay. <laughs> really, this I'm I'm again. It was ah, it's Matilda. Ah, thanks for Matilda's bus. <laughs> thankfully, due to cell health and safety reasons, we don't have any flammable fluid. But uh, well, if not, I was very lucky not to get it on fire. But imagine how much it take to clean up just all this liquid everywhere. Yeah, because hydraulic, it's it's very it's not just as simple as a mop and bucket to clean up. No, it is. Like because 
it's a thick oil and oil and water is very it's an oil basically and oil and water they don't really they don't mix i should so, know i should know i'm a chemist <laughs> today in science class oil doesn't yeah. mix with water you need some soap for that thing but uh the homin nuts actually i can't put it down to the mini bots because the minibots actually let nuts spin up a bit faster than it would have. Because Andron came straight at them, but then the minibots car got underneath them for a second and was like, "Oh, yeah, hold, hold on, sir. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's he's, he's got to get ready first. And then that was, that was pretty genius. That was. <laughs> it was great. I mean, actually, it's not often that the minibots or any kind of like extra robots actually provide anything apart from cannon fodder, but they actually used them pretty effectively there. And nuts. Although, although nuts too kept on taking out its own minibots. Oh yeah, I was picking the heat file. Just kept hitting. <laughs> Fuck you for helping me out. But, yeah, and then obviously Andron got caught on the flipper, and then with no hydraulic fluids, you have no weapon. And no self-writer either. <laughs> so, And then Nuts 2 also took out its self-writing bar. Yeah, so just to put add, add insult to injury, no one can not use a weapon. You can't even use your bar in case you in case you randomly have your weapon working again somehow with no hydraulic fluid. It was, it was a kick in the teeth, to say the least. But Nuts 2 actually gets its second win in a row, which was amazing and as we know there's one more win to go that one's pretty impressive as well yeah. but uh we need we need a uh, third place playoff for the uh, things and obviously iron all six and andrew and four thousand okay um mr speed squared and uh, foxic this is how a two robots with no working weapons fight should go yes <laughs> this was really i mean actually right beginning andrew four thousand was dominating the fight again but then iron all six <laughs> Managed to get you know get them in a bad position and kept getting under them. Yeah, yeah. and and one hit from Matilda caused the uh, bit of tire to go flying, which just like uh, the carbide lot made them reduce a lot of their move maneuverability. But I will say though, it shows you. I would say that Ino wasn't as well controlled in this fight, considering the fact that despite how um, them being right in front of the pit and them not being able to move very much, they somehow ran into the Matilda twice. <laughs> Imagine after all that work. I think it's sort of stuck in between a rock and a hard place because they were worried about uh, Andrew and get, you know going up their wedge and then them driving into the pit first, and then but also they had to try and get a back up there to back up to get a run up, which left them right in the er, right in Matilda's area. It was not a fun place to be in, and actually it'd been kind of funny if I had been flipped over by Matilda, and then Andrew and won. <laughs> Because they ran into Matilda's. Um... You can also tell this uh, this episode this uh, fight was a bit edited because I mean it it it, it was two minutes and fifty eight seconds long, but I don't think the actual edit was two minutes and fifty eight seconds long. No, it, I can't imagine a lot happened in the fight really between between them and Matilda actually causing damage to Androne, but it was very tentative for a lot of time with the cab position and Ionor was in, but eventually we actually get an, another pissing for the series, which is nice to see again. But Andrew kind of fell in, kind of back, you know, on its front, and kind of flipped over, kind of like a really. And we have smoke. We, we have s- smoke out of the pit. Yay! I love oh, it. it's the good old days. Ah, the pit smoke returning. I love it. It's but... a bit small for this size of a pit, but it's a start. Yeah, and with that, I will say that Iron All Six got damn lucky to get to this <laughs> ten-way melee. I mean, I right. think I've got PTSD after watching this episode because every single Iron All fight. It started, they wouldn't flip, and I just kept telling myself, they're conserving gas, they're conserving gas, this is all a tactic. They're going to wait until they've got them ne- got their opponent next to the arena sidewall, and then they're going to flip, and it's going to be amazing. But no, every single goddamn time, you broke my heart, aren't you? <laughs> it's it's uh, alright, Stephen, it's alright, just let it out. You just slowly, you just slowly sat, just... You're just so sat in the corner, rocking back and forth, going, "The flipper works. The flipper works." It's that is that is pretty much how I was. <laughs> I was honestly the same but time please. as well as like when um in the fight with concussion when they got flipped on the on the on the better race of like okay and self right, self right please go on <laughs> you, you you can do For it. Love of God, self right. Come on, boy, you can do it. Come on. Yeah. Oh, and even uh... dark getting into their face about why isn't the flipper working oh the amount of time I was look, look, the flipper worked I mean the cameras weren't pointing at it but the flipper worked I swear to it also twice also this doesn't help when in, in both their, the, in their last two battles they always said when they were asked is the flipper working they would say maybe <laughs> that's the best words you want to hear I mean it's not like you. I mean that's the kind of words you'd say if maybe you've been beaten up by a car but had to rebuild your robot not Oh, we just we just didn't really do anything last battle, and then is it gonna work? Did you let, did you let your, your did you let your eight month old do- uh, granddaughter repair the flipper? 
Oh, 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 come on, I. No, 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 that's, 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 that's not nice. She was driving it. Come on. <laughs> this does bring up a um, continuity question, though, because if I remember, last series, Sabretooth was in danger of getting disqualified because they couldn't get their weapon working. But here, Ironor was allowed to continue fighting even though its weapon wasn't working. I think that might have been a case of just for the television. Yeah. So like, oh, the weapon's not working. That means they get they, they lose their place. I mean, the only I mean, Rapid forfeited because they couldn't drive. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more the case of your robot has to be able to move to be qualified. I mean, unless and also forget crackers and smash went into the arena with no weapons. True. That is true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know once again bullshitted its way through. Um, but the but the, the actual the heat file of concussion versus nuts two the rematch. And their own modifications ruined it. Well, I will say, it was a good match, though. Concussion's the only robot so far to get to the heat final who also had to go through the redemption bracket. That's true, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's true. Every one's actually won every single one of their fights previously. But, yeah, they're the only ones to lose a fight in there and have to go, out for, go to redemption. But it was, a, it was still a good fight. It was very intense. And watching them gyro dance, which, again, I didn't think they could do. Um, and also watching them I mean, desperately trying to self right throughout the entire. It shows the genius. It shows the genius of nuts because they concussion had to basically get themselves damaged to do anything to nuts. Yeah, like, yeah. Nuts had to get, nuts was always going to get the first hit. Yeah, I, I love that. That it was kind of like uh, all the time concussion was trying to self right on the spikes. When Mat- you have Matilda, well, I think it was Matilda, wasn't it? Matilda nearby. I think, and then you have nuts just every now and then coming in with a little hit, which I quite. It was just. It was just like. Give Cushion the break. <laughs> they were con- fucking it up as well. Yeah, it was all not. It was all falling apart for Concussion. As soon as they got flipped over by the flipper, everything that just was went. Shun. To- Shun was beating the shit. Oh, out of him sh- in oh, Shun. Yeah, was- Shun broke the weapon. Um, as Shun a- broke a lot of things. Like you see that moment. When- I think when Shun's blade, when Shun's axe went down on the um, drum, and you just just that explosion of sparks. Yeah, it was. I felt kind of sorry for concussion because nuts all all nuts was doing is just hitting its own mini bots and. <laughs> you can't touch me. You can't touch me. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. Shunt, actually, I think the last time Shunt had a moment this good was the series four grand final with Hypno Disc. I would say no. I would say probably the series nine grand final where they ganged up on Carbide. Yeah, Oscar. I mean, mean concussion. You mean? No, oh, no, oh, 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 oh yeah, the grand, the grand final. Yeah, sorry. Oh yeah. Um. But I felt sorry for concussion. Just no, no leeway. You got a house robot pummeling the shit out of you. The spikes pummeling the shit out of you. You're unable to move because of gyro dancing, and eventually you can't your do own, that. Your own fault. Your own, your own pieces of plastic stuck to you, unable to move, and nuts just coming in every now and going bunk, bunk. To quote that guy who first said that, I don't know his name. You played yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to. Oh, oh, that's from. Oh, that's from. Isn't that from some kind of like American reality show or something? I I think that's from Porn Stars. I'm that's sure. it. That's it. Porn Stars. Come on. Okay. Yeah, some Porn Stars. Yeah. Well done. You played yourself. Yeah, I kept thinking storage from them. No, it's play. It was definitely. Yeah, it's Porn Hunt. Porn Stars. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> P-A-W-N, For those who don't know what we're on about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not. Re- yes. Okay. Yes. To clarify oh, that one. Yeah. That kind of porn star. <laughs> yes, it's well, yeah. Clarification needed, but nuts two is the winner of the heat, and I, and I never thought I'd say that in my life. It we we can say nuts is a grand finalist and not be laughed at now. No, it's nuts is a serious robot. I mean, looking at it in series eight, I mean in series eight, it was legitimately a joke robot with nothing really. And it wasn't very offensive. It was just mostly there for defense, and that was it. Series nine, we never saw anything of it because it didn't really work from the start, and then got pelted out of the arena. And now, nuts has finally had a time to shine. And um, nuts, and nuts also has a t- has a, has two chances for revenge against Beamoff and Carbide. Yes, I imagine they're both going to go after Carbide though, because I can't oh, imagine. And rapid. Yeah, and rapid. Yeah. Oh wow, they've got they've got a lot of robots. Oh, they're, 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 I don't know who well, who's going to win the redemption. No, in the uh, ten way or heat, you know, next heat in two weeks' time. But yeah, you know, they might not have any beef for them lot. But it's amazing how many connections. Terahertz wins. Oh, Terahertz, yeah, and 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 Sabretooth as well. I, th- I don't I don't know they didn't face Sabretooth, did they in the uh, in their heat? No, 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 no they didn't. I forgot that. Yeah, but it's. Yeah, they've got a lot of connections, haven't they? Considering that all these, three, all three of these robots, you know, a lot of these robots appeared in the in the first heats of the series as well. And 
yeah, I can't, I can't believe Nuts won. It's some of the things I can't believe, even though it's been like, you know, a couple of hours since I watched the episode. You did tell us, Alex, uh, Nuts is not a robot to be taken lightly, and I, I will say I didn't it's believe because you. because I knew the outcome, but yeah. Well, I, I, I believed you, but at the same time, I thought to myself, maybe it might just get like a redemption or something, or uh, you know, into the melee zone, but after watching some of the spin-up tests, you know, after Series 9... I fully, be- I, I believed it could do something, and then it was a case of what can happen, and then I never expected this much destruction to happen. So it was even more expected than I thought it was going to be. I, a- I always thought a robot would run, would run into it, and then it wouldn't be able to get up to speed again because the robot would keep hounding it. It, yeah, so, something well, like no, rat- nuts is a damn quick robot as well. That's what you something like I think only something like rapid might be able to, to take it or bay him off maybe. Because it's always one more protection. They've got to get, get in close first. And I mean, ra- I mean, what makes Nuts 2's weapon so flail so good is they're not really for like ch- you know, like ch- tearing off chunks of robots. They're like they're kind of like axes, like uh, flat axes, like four they're or two. They're, they're meant for shocking components. Yeah. Hmm. I love how even the creepy voiceover guy has gone from calling it a flail bot to a full like spinner now. Yeah. It pretty much is though. Oh yeah, we forgot to mention that it's not a spinner. Well, it is. Nuts. But, but it's been there. It's like, what? The, come on, you were calling it a flail bot last year. <laughs> nuts, nuts too. Melty brain bot. Is what I should have said. <laughs> just said that. Nuts too. Melty brain. Also, pr- although I still, th- I still think Stephen, you should have an opening sketch for one of your videos as a day in the life as the voiceover guy. <laughs> oh God, trust me, I'm working on that one. I speak. <laughs> Yay. I mean, props also props to the original nuts just going out grazing in a field. I I still imagine it's there to this day, yeah. just doing it. It's, it's, nice, nice, it's, like, it's nice. Oh, wow. it's, it's nice to just. It's nice to just open uh, to just let your nuts out free in the wild. Let your nuts roam wild and free. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think of it as do you know the ending of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Like it just cuts back and there's Christopher Lloyd going yes, yes. <laughs> this is nuts slowly escapes over the hill. Yeah. <laughs> but just throws uh, a toilet through the window. Yeah. yeah, and that isn't isn't that nuts in that um in the field? Isn't that the series eight nuts? Yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's the original. Eight nuts. You, yeah, you, you can see the uh, the wee bits on the wheels. Yeah, that, that that's the giveaway. Plus, also the kind of slightly bulkier frame as well. Is it? And, and the fact that the frame's yeah. moving side to side. And the fact it's clearly slightly bent up as well. <laughs> Gives it the same. But overall, this heat definitely gets a solid eight and a half out of ten for me. I. I would, I would give it a seven mainly because the second round, the semi-final fights were a bit short, and and also the disappointment of Ainor. Ainor does drop it down a little bit, and some of the short fights do a bit. But I still really enjoyed some of the the you know, semi-final fights as well. And again, some really good battles. Again, particularly with Tor on Iron Man four thousand, and just seeing nuts. Surprising winner. Yeah, and just seeing nuts kick ass is just. Amazing in itself, so I have to give it a yeah, eight and a half. Hour. What, what, uh, yeah, I would say seven. Seven. The three points I would knock it down for is the short fights. I know six is dis- being kind of disappointing, and the lackluster editing. What are you, Stephen? What would you give it out of ten? Yeah, no, I'd agree. I would have given it a, around an eight or so because I loved seeing Angela and the pets helping out Andrew and Four Thousand. Uh, the editing is what drops it down for me, and of course, Arno, you break up my heart. <laughs> you were my number one. And I... You were the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to flip them, not just lie there. <laughs> you, were sp- you were supposed to be the greatest flipper, not a doorstop. <laughs> Insert movie quote about betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, uh, in the case of the kegs, you blew it up. <laughs> <laughs> you no. maniacs. What are you? What are you waiting for? Throw it into the throw it out of the arena. <laughs> Quote Lord of the Rings. No. I was there. <laughs> I was there all those years ago. Yeah. I just look at yeah. the case. Throw it out of the arena. Flip it! No! <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I did not flip him. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not flip him. I, I did in... not. Oh hi Andron. Oh, <laughs> 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 and I'm cool cat, and I love all nuts. That was really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end the episode. <laughs> we're going to need a bigger flip. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to get sued by Derek Savage now. <laughs> oh, sure. 
<laughs> do you do you do you expect me do you expect me to talk? No, I expect you to flip. <laughs> oh, there's so many of these. Yay! No, really, I really do expect you to flip. What the hell are you waiting for? Yeah, please now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was that was Heat uh, Four slash D slash whatever. Uh, great Heat, definitely marred by some editing and some short fights. But overall, apart from Iron I think a lot of the robots at least delivered in their own degree. Even Kex, he was there for the entertainment. Vodka Martini shaken, not flipped. Yeah, I, I, I love the fact they kind of paid you know, pay homage to their um, their their um, audition tape by actually pouring beer out of the robot on the video. That was yeah. that was great to see. Shame that wasn't shame it wasn't available in the in the pit. So I'm sure I'm sure some of the teams would have loved to have just poured a pint. Yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm sure I'm sure uh, some some roboteers would particularly need it. I can imagine I imagine like you know kegs like as they're leaving the arena, and you see Toron sat there, and it's like, hey, do you want one? <laughs> or you see no, you just see cr- you did, no, you Bambi is throwing all these tools around. It's just like yeah, yeah, yeah come over here. That, you, you, that, see, that scene of Craig outside just on the uh, with his hands <laughs> on on the uh, fence, you just see the ke- him pouring a pint out of the kegs. You just see John slowly walk up behind him and pass him a glass with <laughs> half a yeah. pint in it. <laughs> Him and the Vulture team just sharing a beer. <laughs> just this. If it's a hundred miles to Scotland. We've got a full tank of CO two, half a pack of lipos. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Flip it. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start, just getting into quotes and madness. I think I'll end the episode here. I reckon because I think we're going mental. At this point. Now we're going to see some serious flips. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm ending this thing. <laughs> but uh, I'm Jim Dramatic signing off. Uh, and no one else. No, no one else is here, apparently. <laughs> we're all lost in our own sea of movie trivia. Fair enough. We, we were all being polite, and it failed miserably. Yes. Um, yeah, so I'm signing off. Those guys are doing movie quotes. And... Oh, I am your flip.